which means okay. people who do not have a bank account. And uh, that has changed a lot different. in the last uh, five years. Uh, today we have more than one point five billion. In, this is an article that was written in two thousand and nineteen. Okay. Hundred, now, some of them have got bank accounts, but they just don't use them. So, yeah, okay. because they're too far from a bank or this or that. So, but if you've got a smartphone, you yeah. can do crypto. Yeah. As long as you've got a smartphone and access to the internet. Yeah, I think now, uh, see this, uh, uh, with all the pandemic and all the lockdowns, uh, now people are forced to use their smartphones uh, and uh, find newer ways of uh, uh, doing business without getting stepping out of their houses. So that uh, has actually pushed people into digital economy. So now I think uh, the crypto will make more sense and people will start adopting it. That's my uh, understanding. Yep. Well, it's amazing. It's changed my life. It's mm -hmm. totally changed my life. And because uh, I had a really rough thing, I, I had did a property development and it collapsed with the GFC. So I had, uh, even after I sold three properties, I had a half a million dollars worth of debt. And I, but I refused to go, half a million dollars Australian worth of debt. You, you know, it's yes. a lot in rupees. Okay. I, I can understand. So, so um, but I was determined not to go bankrupt. So I found a way out of it. I found a way to pay it back all my people. And crypto has really helped me to be able to do that. And I will have paid back. It's the end of this month that I will have paid back every single cent of that half a million dollars. And unfortunately, and, all the long term change of the thing. No, well, I'm very blessed because I refused to go bankrupt. That was taking the easy yes. way out, you see. And mm. so now because of that, it was such a blessing because it's taught me about crypto. It's taught me about this and that and the other. And I've had to find other ways. And so I'm very blessed. Very blessed. Uh, I, yesterday only I downloaded your book, uh, which you have written about uh, crypto for uh, mothers, uh, working mothers. Like oh, this. did you? Because I hope you didn't pay for it. I know it's available on... Uh, Kindle London Unlimited. Oh, good. Because mm -hmm. that's great. Because I was going to give it free to everybody today. Because on Amazon, oh, okay. it's like nine ninety nine. Uh, okay. So I bought, no, downloaded the free version in uh, Kindle Unlimited. And I'm looking forward to the, you know, reading it. Oh. Because I do come from the IT business. Pardon? You keep, it, you keep in touch because I'll help you. I'll guide you. I'm going to be putting together a course to step-by-step mm -hmm. -step mothers through this. I've just been a bit busy doing a lot of other study at the moment. I've been learning some new coaching, a new kind of coaching to work with the superconscious. So um, I've been pretty busy. But in the next, say, two months, I will have put together a course where I can step people through just the basics, how to set up a wallet, how to do all of this stuff. And, and just yeah, I, definitely, uh, I definitely look forward to it because, uh, see, I uh, come from the IT industry. Uh, I was oh. working as a software professional for uh, close to 20 years. And uh, my last stint was with uh, HP as a new business initiative head for uh, US and Europe. But it's been nearly a decade since I you know, uh, stopped working and I'm a, a um, serial entrepreneur and currently I'm working in renewable energy sector. I convert organic <gasps> waste into bio CNG. So well, I, yeah. I, the renewable energy sector, I mean, that's, uh, when I normally introduce myself, I say there's Micro Maggie and Macro Maggie. So Micro Maggie yeah. is this work that I do here. And mm -hmm. Macro Maggie is the work that I do with a company called GCC. And mm -hmm. one of our projects is that we get waste from waste mm -hmm. dumps mm -hmm. and we make power from okay. that. Uh, what is the technology you're using? Uh, pyrolysis. Oh, you're doing it with pyrolysis. Okay. Yes. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's a bit more complicated than that, but it's easier to just say it in one word. So right, it's a yeah, yeah. But we're also using the power on site to mine crypto. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's many ways to skin a cat. Yes. So I wonder where my other lady is then. I don't know what hasn't what happened. Probably we'll just start with you. Uh, you know, uh, already there. Uh, you know, uh, take us through your journey. Where you started and you know, where, how did you land up where you are today? Okay, so you want me to start it as if I'm doing the presentation now? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Well, uh, hello everybody. My name is Maggie Weber. And before I start, I'd like to have a bit of a disclaimer to keep the lawyers happy that I'm not um, a financial consultant. And so I'm not giving any advice. All I'm doing is sharing my journey with how I've got into crypto. And 
and how I and I just love blockchain and cryptocurrencies so much because well Bitcoin is actually called the people's coin and it's so fair it's so fair and 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 this really appeals to um my heart and my sense of equanimity and equality and, and everything like this. So this is why I love blockchain and cryptocurrency so much. So a little bit about my journey, how I got into it. Um, well, I had a challenge. I, I, when the GFC hit, I was doing a property development and um, I was doing very, very well until we got held up on just one little bit to do with the property development. And then that meant that we waited another 18 months by which stage of the GFC hit. I couldn't finance the property. Um, the value of the land, even with the development application on it, was less than what I, I, I paid, but I still had to pay all the engineers and the architects. And I refused to go bankrupt. And so I decided I needed to, I had to find a way to pay this half a million dollars back. And crypto has really helped me in my journey to do that. Now, my first exploration into crypto was a scam. Mm. And I lost $10,000 on and that's that. That's essentially what I wanted to ask you. Because every time we talk about crypto, so you see, you know what I got uh, scammed. So I'm really worried. Like, how do I know that? Absolutely. You know, I'm yeah. Absolutely right. And so I'm really grateful because I was actually, I put my money into it for three months and then I had, um, my three months was up and then the lady who had introduced me to it, she said, reinvest it. So I had $10,000 US in there plus one Bitcoin I had made. Oh. And two days later, I reinvested it and two days later, it went belly up, but it was a scam. So that means that I've got my antenna up. I know what to look for. There's also websites that you can go to now because back in 2017, when I got involved, there were people doing ICOs, which stands for initial coin offerings, all over the shop and people were just throwing money at them. And so I'm really glad for the experience of losing that money in that scam because it's made me learn what to look for, learn, you know, the, what do they, what do they call it? The traps for, for young players. And so that's what I write about in my book. And I know, you know, I can guide people as to ways to avoid these traps. I'm not saying that you will avoid all of them because you, I mean, look at what happened on Twitter the other day um, with, with that business there, but you know, Twitter's going to get sued for that. And I noticed that what's his name was, was Noski from, one of the founders of Microsoft, he's actually going to be suing YouTube um, because of YouTube allowing these scammers to do these stories on YouTube. So the people are out there now looking for these scammers and um, yeah, but anyway, that's the downside of crypto I want to talk about. <laughs> and I'd like to talk with you. Um, first, I want to explain what uh, blockchain is very mm -hmm. quickly. And then I want to um, explain um, about what cryptocurrency is. And then I'm going to give you some really interesting statistics <laughs> and figures because it's fun. So, um, and I'm summaring, summarizing a 64 page book now in 13 minutes. Okay. So um, let's go. So blockchain, the simplest way to, decide, to describe a blockchain is that it's a decentralized ledger. Um, and it's made up of blocks of data. And the first block that was ever created was created on the Bitcoin blockchain. And it was created on the 3rd of January, 2009. And it was created by someone called Satoshi Nakamoto. And we still to this day don't know whether Satoshi Nakamoto is a he or a she or a, she. Or a group of people. So we'll just call Satoshi a he for now. Because <laughs> it'll <laughs> We'll say, we'll say they, all right? That covers all manner of things. All right, so Genesis Block was created on that date, the 3rd of January, 2009. And the interesting thing was that in that block of data of all those transactions, there was a little clue that said, a little hint that was preserved for posterity, which said the chancellor is on the brink of the second bailout for banks. 
So in other words, people were coming in to bail out the banks yet again. Lehman Brothers had failed four months before on September the 15th, 2008. And these are these banks that are too big to fail. You're right. So what happens is governments come in and they save these people. But if I have time, I'm going to talk to you and, 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 they call, and they're called bailouts. But if I have time, I'm going to talk to you about bail-ins because they are really scary and they are what is going to be happening more and more now with the, with the economy. In fact, let me explain to you right now what a bailout, a bail-in yeah, is. I think you should because we have time and uh, you're the only speaker to live. Excellent. Fine, well, I'm happy bailout to is where people come and they actually save you know, like General Motors Holden or not General, you know, General Motors in, in the States or these companies that really should fail because they're not being managed properly. And the governments come in and they save them, right? And they save these banks. Excuse me while I'm just rugging up a little bit here, a bit, bit yes. cold. Um, so they, they, they come in and they save them. But now the law has changed. And the law has changed in such a way that we can now have things called bail-ins. And what a bail-in is, is where um, someone depositing their money in the bank, they are called an unsecured creditor. Yes. So if a bank gets in difficulty, the bank can come and take a portion of what money's in the bank. Now, we have a limit in, in Australia, but this happened in Cyprus. And this is why I'd like you to see my PowerPoint, if anyone's interested in this, because I've got slides and all of this. Uh, so it's already see, if you're able to do it, I'm not sure. If you're able to uh, no, show your uh, screen, I, I have no problem. I would love to. Oh, well, uh, nah, don't worry about it. I'll okay. send it. Okay. So, well, I'll try, but. Yeah, I, uh, I like to say, yeah. No, otherwise it's going to ruin my flow. Fair enough. Fair so enough. anyway. Sorry, I didn't. Um, that's okay. That's okay. So anyway, so the bail-ins has, has already happened in Cyprus mm -hmm. and they came and they took, we, we had a client who had something like 200 million euros in the, in the bank in Cyprus and they came and they took 93% of his money oh my in God. Cyprus. Oh. Mm -hmm. So with what's going on at the moment, particularly with all this money that's being printed, which is devaluing dollars and rupees yes. and I don't know if no, no, it in, no, in, yes. in India, they are in Australia, billions, and they are in the States. This is devaluing the, the value of this fiat currency and these banks are shaky. There's banks like Deutsche Bank's in trouble, uh, so many of them. Anyway, so that's what a bail-in is. So because I would no more have any money or accept very little in the bank than fly to the moon. Yeah. It's safer okay. under your bed. Yeah. Okay, so back to this Genesis block, 3rd of January. So Chancellor on the brink of second bailout for the banks, you know, that are too big to fail. Now, one of the reasons that Satoshi Nakamoto put that in that first Genesis block was one, it was a time stamp, which all blocks are, they've got like dated and timed. And also it was a way of putting in this derisive comment about, you know, the global instability that's caused by what's called fractional reserve banking and i got i got to tell you last year when i was in london i went i was involved with the uh, i belonged to a group they're called uh women in blockchain mm -hmm. and in london and i went to this amazing fintech conference and i met people on the board of santander bank and bank of england and blank of scotland and blah, 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 all these big people and i'm just looking at them and i'm looking at these big buildings every these cost money Yes. This is our money that's being used for all of it. And I just look at just how much is wasted. Anyway, so at the very core of blockchain, at the very heart of blockchain, is the concept of decentralization. And what Satoshi Nakamoto wanted was that there was no control given to one single entity, be it a government or be it a bank. So that these, because these people can pull the strings and they can manipulate market and they take away, which is what's happening at the moment. I mean, just look at it, that the printing press is going. And so they, and it's, this is why it's called, Bitcoin's called the people's coin, because it, 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 he didn't want the freedom that's to be taken away from people and their choices about what to do with their money. 
So, and the other thing about a blockchain, which I won't go into now, is it takes away a problem of something called double spending, which is where you can actually, um, you, you know, money can sort of be used twice, but mm -hmm. won't go into that really at the moment. So what are the top benefits? This is what I really want to get to. The top benefits of blockchain. Firstly, there's the security. So because the blockchain for Bitcoin, and there's blockchains for everything. There's blockchains for agriculture, for um, for fishing, for um, supply chains, for so many, for voting. Yeah, voting yeah, and even in renewable energy, they're using it, I know. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things about a, block, uh, um, a blockchain um, is that these, uh, the Bitcoin one anyway, is that it's um, connected by hundreds, now hundreds and thousands of computers. Um, and they're special kinds of computers, mind you, um, not just, you know, like a laptop. And, and, and each of these computer helps in the monitoring and the verifying and therefore adding a block. So on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain, a block is added almost every 10 minutes which is actually really slow now compared to some of the other blockchains behind some of the other uh, cryptocurrencies. But I'll get into that in a minute. But when it first came out, you know, like uh, 11 years ago, it was fast. And it's still fast compared to traditional banking. So the whole idea, therefore, is if with all these checks and balances of these hundreds and thousands of computers checking each other, is that it prevents any single any one entity from changing any records. So there can be no fraud. The Does other thing about success. absolute transparency, yeah. absolute transparency, which we need, you know, for goodness no, sake. We never had it in the traditional banking system. Never had because it. Never, as never a had customer, it. you have absolutely no clue what the bank is doing with your money and whether you will even get it back once you have deposited there. Yeah. I have a lovely Indian friend who does podcasts and I mean, just her bank, her money's just been taken by the bank. I don't know if it's been a bailout, but she's just yeah. had her money. Oh, anyway, we won't go into that now. Such yeah. a lovely lady. Anyway, so open source. So therefore every transaction can be seen, yeah. although your identity is disguised. Oh. Because your identity is disguised by having two things. One's called a private key, which you never divulge to anybody <laughs> and you have your public keys so it's a combination of numbers and letters and i think it's 24 in each or it depends oh, okay. on what blockchain you're doing so okay. this is this is what happens and so what happens is your identity is disguised by what are called hash functions at the beginning of each block there's this hash function and this changes after every transaction so therefore this can this security is giving you complete transparency and the whole blockchain is built on this foundation of interdependence, not independence, but interdependence, inter everybody working together and on the foundation of freedom. So there's zero chance of fraud, uh, of fraud and, um, or any record tampering. No one can change records. You can't have someone up in the office on a Friday night changing <laughs> records and, and, and you know, and, and taking money. That's fantastic. The other thing that is fantastic about it, and I want to give you a personal example that happened with, with me this week. There's no exorbitant monetary charges that are going to the middlemen because mm. it's peer to peer. So if I send you Bitcoin, mm. straight you to me. No one in the middle making money. Oh, very good. Now, the un wonderful thing about that is, is the other day I had, I had a, just over a Bitcoin and I converted it into 10,000 US. Do you know how much that cost me? Mm -hmm. 70 cents. That's all? Oh 70 my cents. Oh my God. <laughs> and that's how much it costs to transfer it and then put that into a, a, an investment that I'm, I'm in, involved with. And it all happened in less than 10 minutes. Oh. And that money was going overseas. Well, you so tried doing that on. So you can be sitting in any part of the world and sending it to any part of the world, uh, or no, and everything is transparent, everything is safe, and uh, with the least uh, transaction cost. It's a godsend. Yes. It's, what it's, more it's can anybody ask? Yeah. yeah. I mean, people go on about, 
you know, oh, but Bitcoin is so bad. People use it for arms dealing and they use it for drugs okay. and use it for their, you know, what's his name? Um, that bloke from down in South America, I've forgotten his name. His his family, you know, the big drug cocaine mm. guy um, who, who, who was involved with George Bush, they say. Um, <laughs> uh, George Bush Senior. Um, allegedly. So um, he, you know, if, if I could tell you how much gets laundered through an ATM, mm. how much fiat currency gets laundered through a casino. And the fact of the matter is that criminals do not really like crypto because it's transparent, because it can be traced. It's all on the blockchain. So they, they, they actually don't like it that much. It, well, it, I know there was all that business with Silk Road and drugs and things like that, but um, it's it's not as it's <laughs> everything is traceable. And this whole business with Twitter and everything else, they'll they'll track track those people down, and they're already onto them. So no exorbitant monetary charges to middlemen. So it's low overall cost and high efficiency of transfer. But the other thing that I love. So much is that it is bringing the opportunity for financial for investment and financial security, particularly to women yes. in countries where there are what we call unbankables. Mm -hmm. The 170, and I put this in the, in the um, PowerPoint production. I've got a link to a story which talks which from 2019, some research that was done by two people in America, um, one of them an Indian about 170 million unbankables in India mm -hmm. and India second only after China yeah. for people not having a bank account. All right. So now some important dates. I find this, this is hilarious. So the first date was October the 31st, mm -hmm. uh, 2008, when the first paper was published and it was called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And that was written by this, Satoshi Nakamoto, or there's a big fight at the moment with with um, his foundation and a chap called Craig White, an Australian Craig, Craig Wright, an Australian chap who's claiming he's now Satoshi Nakamoto. But so there's all in the courts at the moment. Then January the third, two thousand and nine, the Genesis block block was created, and now the reward for that was fifty Bitcoin. Oh. Now, that money still has not been cashed in to this day. This, that Bitcoin has not been cashed in to this day. Mm. But now I want you to remember that because that was in the days when a Bitcoin was worth five cents. Or so he got 50, 50 Bitcoin for creating that first block. Then May the 22nd, this is so funny, May the 22nd, uh, 2010, was the first Bitcoin purchase. And a chap called Laszlo Hanyets, I think that's how you say his name, he bought, mm. I shouldn't laugh, he mm. bought two Papa John's pizzas. Oh, okay. Uh. With 10,000 Bitcoin. Oh my God. Because they were worth five cents back then. I worked it out today that at the, the rate of Bitcoin, what it's worth to uh, today's prices, because it's gone up by about three and a half, or actually about 4% today, Bitcoin. Uh, he paid 95,836,600 oh dollars for Oh Bitcoin. my God. <laughs> Where did you pay before, Maggie? I would have invested in this long before. Maybe you. They was expensive pizzas. Anyway. <laughs> Then December the 17th, 2019, uh, that was another very important date. That's the highest price Bitcoin has been to so far. And that was US $19,783. And I won't remember when it went up that high and I'm going rubbing my hands. But it's come down a bit since then, but it's on a, what's called a bull run now. It mm -hmm. started um, in the last couple of weeks, it started its bull run. So, and the next important date that I think is 2140. And that's the date that the last Bitcoin will be mined. 
And that is because the limit to Bitcoin is 21 million Bitcoin. And there's already about nearly 18 million of them mined. So can you see as people get more and more into Bitcoin, the value, it's all supply and demand. The value of them has got to skyrocket as we have less and less opportunity to be able to buy them. Yeah. And that's why those we were enter early will probably make, those I'm sorry? Enter early. Those who enter early will probably make a windfall. Well, I got my first Bitcoin. My I invest uh, I invest two hundred and fifty dollars a week. Oh, okay. Into some kind of crypto because it's called dollar cost averaging. So I don't, you know, sometimes I buy Bitcoin, sometimes I buy one of what are called the altcoins, mm -hmm. which means alternative coins. And so I just do, I just average it out so that you know I go with the swings and the roundabouts, and I just know that with with what is happening, some of them you make up to 400% on. This is the stock market. Hello. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, exactly right. And so all these people are worried about it, but you know, you've, there's some pitfalls. You've just got to be aware of them. So now I'm going to tell you what, what, what crypto is. Um, I've got another 10 minutes here. So crypto, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin was the first that was, was mined. And so we call that the mothership. And what tends to happen on the market is that whatever Bitcoin does, the others tend to do. So like you've got Ethereum, the main ones are, are Ethereum, Monero, Litecoin, whatever. But when I gave the presentation in London last year, in November, there were about three and a half thousand alt coins, which stands mm -hmm. for alternative coins. Today, I checked on coin market cap, there's 5,784 altcoins. Okay. So that's other things that you can invest in. Mm -hmm. Now, I probably, I usually invest in, say, the top 30. And only because I study it really, really hard. I'm studying with some guys in the States who are the best. They run a, a podcast on crypto. We've just this weekend, um, we've had 35 hedge fund managers speaking to us about, because, you know, you, you go where the smart money's going and some of the smart money in these hedge funds is going into crypto. So it's nothing to be scared of, really nothing to be scared of. So anyway, mm -hmm. so at today's date, we've got 5,784 altcoins. And you can guarantee mm -hmm. tomorrow that'll be 5,785. So it's not physical money. It exists online. You can't feel and touch it. But with what's happening with, with coronavirus, people aren't wanting to touch money anyway these yeah. days. And quite frankly, the money in your bank is a zero of... Uh, is is a series of zeros and ones anyway because it's just it's online anyway yes so and people think that just because it's got a certain value that we all accept that it's well we're, we're seeing that that's not the case at the moment anyway now the other thing about it is it's not issued yet yet mm -hmm. i say that reservedly because china's really going for trying to to create one, but it's not issued yet by a bank or a government. Um, Japan's trying to create its own coin. Um, Chinese government's trying to, and we really hope that it never does because this defeats the whole purpose of decentralization. Yes. Uh, the moment this the government not, comes in, then the whole, it will not be transparent and uh, it will not, you can't uh, trade as freely as you're doing today. Well, exactly then, right. And, but it also means it's not the people's coin anymore. Yeah. And this is why, Facebook, when it tried to bring out LibraCoin uh, last year, there was such a kickback because it was too much control. And, and Facebook's got, you know, a third of the world's population on Facebook. It would be way too much control for one single entity. So people trust Bitcoin and crypto. Um, and for people to trust it as well as you know, people who understand it do, there needed to be checks and balances and uh, to make sure that it's it's as secure, and I say this reservedly, as secure as a national or fiat currency, which are hardly secure right now. <laughs> so this is where the miners come in. 
uh, and who, what are miners? So miners are, they're kind of like the auditors. They're the ones who check the letter number combination of each transaction. And they use very complex mathematics on very specialized computers to do it, they're called algorithms. And once the right combination is found and it's verified by all these other computers around the world, um, this, the, which proves that the transaction is, is right, this creates what's called a timestamp. And once it's all confirmed, a new block is created. And one block is created every 10 minutes or so. Oh, okay. Other cryptocurrencies, other blockchains, I won't get into them now, are much faster than the blockchain, the, the Bitcoin blockchain. But whatever happens, Bitcoin's the mothership. Well, it is for now, according to what's called coin market cap, you know, how much is, is on the market at the moment. So this is how a miner gets paid. They get paid by creating these blocks. And it's a real competition. And yet once one gets the number, then the others all support them and verify because they all have an opportunity to, to, to win the match. And so this is, to, this is how they get paid. And so you can understand if you're going to get 50 Bitcoin for creating the first block, that was, you know, but wasn't that much because they're only worth 50 cents. But now each Bitcoin is worth, uh, what's today's rate? $9,583 US or $760. At today's date, yeah. which is seven thousand four hundred ninety-two Great British pounds, or thirteen thousand four hundred eighty-eight Australian over today. So, um, there's got to be an incentive for these um, miners, and so that there's no need for a government or a bank to intervene. But what happens is every so often there's what's called a halving. Mm. And we had one in May this year. And usually what happens when there's a halving because there's less being created, the value goes up. And we were really surprised to see that it didn't go up by much, but we were right in the middle of COVID and the stock market crashed. It's actually held its value very well compared to the stock market, but it's now starting its bull run. And remember that there's only ever going to be 21 million of them made. So as more people are, you know, are jumping on board because of COVID and everything else, um, there's going to be much more, uh, the value is going to go up because there's going to be Definitely so much more. Definitely just slow because uh, now uh, the, you know, the, the pandemic has created so much of uncertainty. So many organizations are going belly up. So th there is a, a, a no uncertainty in everybody's mind. It's, look, if I put my hard earned money into the bank, how sure am I that it's going to come back to me? And then, I, and then, then there you have restrictions that I can't go out of my house. Uh, no, the banks are not working. The ATMs are not working. Then what do I do? I have money, but I can't spend it. There's so many ways to spend, you know, Bitcoin now online. I, and, I, and I just don't, I get paid in money um, mm -hmm. from the consulting work that I do. But I'm for my coaching work now, I'm going to ask people to pay me in Bitcoin or Ethereum. Yeah. Ethereum's not okay. Yeah, I, I see that you are doing a lot of coaching also. So uh, what kind of a coaching do you do? Oh, well, I, I love coaching, you know, working mothers and helping them to start their own businesses. And often if they're at home so that they can still be there for their children if, if, if needs, because I find too many, well, this is personal opinion, how hard it is for, for mothers, um, you know, They've got to go and work and then they and they, they have to have their children brought up in childcare and, and all the rest. So that's why with my two children, I did a lot from home. I did a lot of network marketing and things like that and, and coaching and consulting from home. So I could be there for my children. And they were both very, very active, my kids, and great athletes. Both played three sports each and then, you know, did drama and singing and this, that thing. That's and I awesome. wanted to be there for every minute of it. So my weekends were just taken up with my children. But... My daughter will say that I was a workaholic and I work really hard, but at least I was. <laughs> I know. They're talking to you. Who can say that a woman cannot have it all? Who says that you know you you have to choose between the career or your uh, personal life? You seem to be. Well, that was excellent. my first best-selling book. It's very interesting you say that because my first Amazon bestseller was called mm -hmm. A Working Mother's Guide to a Guilt-Free Career. 
because I, so, I'm a coach too. I mentor, uh, I work with a uh, UN organization called uh, Private Financing Advisory Network. And I mentor entrepreneurs in clean energy and energy efficiency business and help them oh, to get funding. Fantastic. Right? So, uh, I understand what you, what it, the, sorry, sorry, interrupt. The new kind of coaching I'm getting into now is really cool because 95% yes, of what we do is run by our subconscious. Mm. So um, I'm getting into working with sort of reprogramming that, but working with what's called the super conscious. Now, wow. my main mentor, Deepak Chopra, he calls that mm. the field of infinite possibilities. Some people might call it a cashic record. But, so it's really to get into tapping into that. It's really cool. Yeah. I, I, I'll be, uh, no, uh, cool. I, I would like to know, be your mentee for this new coaching, if you would uh, be interested in taking me. Absolutely, I would. Yeah. But I need about another four weeks till I finish my course. Okay, no problem. I'll keep in touch with you. It's We've got a minute. i talking to you, Maggie. Thank uh, you. We've I got can't... a minute until your next person starts. <laughs> so it's been delightful. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. I do hope uh, and, I get a uh, Yeah, I, I definitely want to you know, go through your book and uh, I, I'll keep in touch with you. I'll, from the organizers, I'll take your uh, email ID. I'll keep in touch with you and okay. uh, see uh, how we can uh, work together because I, I remember seeing uh, you have some uh, green energy or a green box or something uh, you have been yeah, mentioning. So I'd like to know more about that too. Okay. So, but uh, <laughs> my uh, host is telling me the time is up and I need to. Uh, okay. Please, if anyone wants these PowerPoint slides, Maggie at MaggieWeber.com. Maggie at MaggieWeber.com. Okay. Happy Maggie to Weber. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye. It's wonderful. And uh, on behalf of uh, uh, no, uh, WEF, uh, we would like to confer uh, an award on you uh, as uh, the iconic woman creating a better world for all. Thank so you really so much. Awesome. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste. Thank you. Thanks a lot.